Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the emitter coupled by stable multi vibrator. So, emitter coupled by stable multi vibrator mostly popularized with the name called Smith Trigger. So, you might have heard this name Smith Trigger, which is used to convert any type of input waveform into a square waveform. That is the main application of this Smith Trigger. Whatever is the input waveform you give, either sinusoidal, square waveform, or triangular waveform or any type of input waveform shape that converted into a square waveform. Even if you give square waveform at the input, output is also a square waveform. Sinusoidal, triangular, whatever it is, output is a square waveform. That is the main application of this Smith trigger. This Smith trigger is constructed using emitter coupled bistable multivibrator. Okay. So, in the beginning of this bistable multivibrator, I told you uh, two coupling mechanisms are there. One is collector coupled, another one is emitter coupled mechanism. In the collector coupled, we have come across two different types of bistable multivibrator construction. So, one is fixed bias, another one is self bias. So, those two coming under collector coupled bistable multivibrator. Now, this the next third type of bistable multivibrator is a, an emitter coupled multivibrator so emitter coupled by stable multivibrator is constructed in this way if you observe this circuit diagram what is the difference between the previous diagrams whatever we have considered so far in the case of bi stable multivibrators and this one is here it is having a sinusoidal input signal here this type of emitter coupled by stable multivibrator has a specific input waveform which is applied at the base of first transistor Q1. Okay, but whereas in the previous cases like a fixed bias which is a type of collector coupled, another one is a self bias which is also a type of collector coupled. In those two bistable multivibrator types, there was no specific input signal applied. There was no input signal applied. Only biasing supply we have given plus VCC. And another one is a minus VBB signal for a fixed bias. But this type of input waveform was not there. Because it is a self-biasing technique. One is a fixed biasing technique. Uh, one transistor output is connected as the input of the other transistor. And vice versa. Thereby the signal will be generated within that loop. Okay, one positive feedback loop is there, the same signal will be repeated there only. But whereas here in the emitter coupled by stable multivibrator, which is known as a Smith trigger, Smith trigger, the input waveform we are giving, a, let us consider a sinusoidal signal. This is the input signal we are giving at the input of base 1 of the transistor. See here. The output of the first transistor, the output of the first transistor, which is the collector 1, it is the emitter 1. The output of first transistor taken from the collector 1 and applied to the second transistor through a coupling network. This coupling network is consisting of R1 and C1 in parallel. And again, given at the input of base 2, which is having a resistor R2 at the base 1, base 2 to the ground. Okay, by seeing this diagram, you can understand what is the importance of this capacitor C1 and what is the name of this capacitor C1 also. So, capacitor C1 is a commutating capacitor. Capacitor C1 is a commutating capacitor or we can say speed up capacitor or a transpose capacitor. This capacitor is used to compensate the capacitance formed by this input of this base to emitter junction of the transistor Q2. Okay, so I told you already attenuation concept is there between R1 and R2, but here as the capacitance is existed from base to emitter, which is a uh, virtual capacitance, to avoid that uncompensated reaction, we are using a capacitor C1 to compensate it. Okay, so that it is providing a compensated attenuated network. Now, the output of collector 1 is given to the input base 2 of transistor Q2 through a coupling network like a parallel combination of resistance and capacitance. Now, the entire output of this Smith trigger is taken from the output V0, which is from the collector 2, transistor collector 2 to ground. 
Okay, one thing you have to understand here is the output of Smidrigger is no way directly connected to collector 1. Okay, the output of Smidrigger is not connected to collector 1 which is at the first transistor. That means output and first transistor are not related to each other. Okay, and here the current coming from the first transistor IC1 that enters into this first transistor here IB1 is coming IB1 IC1 these two are added and coming out from IE this is IE1 IE1 how can we write it IE1 is equal to IC1 plus IB1 and similarly IE2 which is coming from the emitter to IE2 is equal to IC2 plus IB2 which is a combination of these two currents at entering from the transistor. Okay, so what could be the phase shift of this uh, split trigger? What could be the phase shift? Phase shift is 0 or 360 degrees. Phase shift for this type of network is phase shift. Phase shift for this type of network is 0 degrees or 360 degrees. Why it is 0 degrees? Transistor provides 180 degrees phase shift between input and output. And that 180 degrees again passing through this tra another transistor provides one more 80 degrees. So 180, 180 gives 360 degrees. 360 degrees is nothing but again we can call it as 0 degrees. Okay, that's why in Smith trigger there is no phase reference between the input signal and output signal because of the two transistors are connected whereas one transistor is given with input and another transistor is taken at the output and now what is the amount of current entering into the resistor RE which is IE IE is nothing but it is a combination of the currents coming from Q1 and as well as Q2 okay so I will write a few points about this Smith trigger here so Smith trigger Smith trigger contains an input signal at base 1 of Q1 and there is no phase difference between input and output there is no phase difference between input and output and what is the current flowing through the resistance re the current flowing through resistance RE is IE1 plus IE2. Both currents will not be available at a time because the transistors are operated in push-pull configuration. If one transistor is in on state, another transistor is in off state. Whichever transistor is said to be in on state, that transistor will be having the flow of current and that current is entering into the IE. Okay, but in general you can write it as it is a combination of both IE1 and as well as IE2. And what we what else we can write? Output is taken. Output is taken from Q2's collector. Okay, see here. Assume assume a condition let us consider the condition q1 is in off state and q2 is in on state suppose initially we can say quiescent condition in quiescent condition q1 is in on off state and q2 is in on state q1 is in off state means what input we have not given the sufficient voltage to make the transistor on that's why q1 is in on off state and q2 why q1 is in 
Uh, okay, why why Q2 is in on state when Q1 is in off state? See, if this transistor is in off state, there is no flow of current. So this current will have a path from RC1 towards this RC2 and then it goes towards the base 2 of this transistor. Okay. Or else we can also say when this transistor is in off state, there exists a maximum voltage drop, that voltage drop which is equal to VCC. So VC1 is equal to VCC and that is applied directly at the base of the transistor Q2. So Q2 is having a sufficient voltage to go in up and operate in the saturation region. So Q2 is in saturation region. That's why it is on state. So when it is in on state, what about the transistor current flowing through this one? IC2 is flowing. So IC2 is flowing. IC2 flows. And we can write IE2 is equal to IB2 plus IC2. IC2 plus IB2. And output voltage V0 is equal to V0 is taken from collector 2 to ground. So that is equal to VCC minus VCC minus IC to RC or VC set we can also write in that way. VCC minus IC to into RC. Okay. So as IC to current flows and which is nothing but IE to the emitter current, the emitter current IE is equal to now it is IE2 for this condition. Okay. Suppose if we slowly increase the input signal strength, then Q1 will be having, first transistor will be having the sufficient voltage at the input to go into the saturation. As this transistor goes into the saturation, at the collector 1, the voltage decreases and this voltage is not sufficient to switch on this particular transistor Q2. So this transistor is operated now in off state when off when q2 is in off state what is the voltage across this transistor it is vcc because when this transistor is in off state there is no flow of current across this so there is no voltage drop so whatever the input voltage is there in that path that will be taken from the output so at that time v0 is equal to vcc okay so that means what is the voltage swing voltage swing of Smith trigger voltage swing of Smith trigger is from VCC to VCC minus IC to RC VCC minus VCC minus uh, IC to into RC this is the voltage swing maximum to minimum or we can say it is nothing but VCC minus ICRC is if, if for ideal case it is zero then VCC will come VCC is the maximum uh, voltage swing between input and output see here consider a waveform which is applied at the input of this Smith trigger uh, one more important point it is having input signal okay I told you already input signal at the base one so Consider a waveform, a sinusoidal signal which is applied at the base of transistor Q1. Input signal. Now, what is the output signal? Let us consider two different voltages mark on the input signal. One is used to switch on the transistor another one is used to switch off the transistor so this is the voltage known as v1 and this is v2 actual names are different i will tell you but meanwhile for example take v1 and v2 for our standing for our understanding so draw a vertical line from here and as well as from here Now, V1, when input voltage V in is greater than V1, Q1 comes into on state. When V input voltage is greater than V1, Q1 comes into on state. 
then when q1 comes into on state what is the value of uh, how is the consideration of q2 q2 now it is nothing but off state okay so when first transistor is in on state and second transistor is in off state the output goes to vcc the output goes to vcc how long it will be when input voltage is this is the case one second case is when input voltage is less than v2 input voltage is less than v2 for all this negative peak q1 is in off state q2 is in on state so when q1 is in off state and q2 on state output we are taking from the second transistor but the second transistor is in off state so we will be having a voltage drop of v not like this this small gap represents vce sat vce sat and again when input voltage crosses the particular voltage in the positive side again it goes to the upper level so the voltage swing is ic2 into rc2 voltage swing is ic2 into rc2 okay so this is the way to show the output waveform now before going into the next slide let me tell you one thing where v1 is one point which changes the state of the output signal this is vcc and the lower limit is vce sat let us consider this is vce sat okay when input voltage crosses v1 output goes to up that is vcc when input voltage crosses v2 output goes to lower level that is vce sat so we can name these two voltages v1 and v2 as v1 as upper threshold point or upper triggering point utp upper triggering point and v2 is named as lower triggering point lower threshold point or lower triggering point so vt v1 is nothing but vutp vutp upper triggering point whenever this point occurs output goes to upper level high and whenever this point v2 occurs the output goes to lower level so that's why it is known as ltp if you take the hysteresis loop of these two this is the hysteresis loop of this particular smith trigger hysteresis loop so hysteresis loop is nothing but see here when input voltage crosses v out v utp this is utp here it is ltp when input voltage crosses v utp what is the case we have assumed we have answered there input crosses vtp minus input crosses vtp is nothing but output is equal to vc sat and when input voltage is crossing vltp then output is minus v sat so the output voltage will be swing between this vc sat and as well as vc vcc this is called hysteresis loop okay so this is about the operation and construction of this smith trigger main application is smith trigger is used to convert any type of waveform into a square waveform with zero or 360 degrees phase shift thank you